memory trick, think OA is ouch pain, bone on bone rubbing. And RA is rude pain, the body's attacking itself. So rude. So let's cover RA first. Rheumatoid arthritis. This is the autoimmune disorder where the body attacks itself, mainly attacking the joints, causing major inflammation and deformity. Notably seen in the joints of the hand, like the knuckles. But RA can also involve other organs, like the skin, eyes, and lungs, as collateral damage when the body attacks itself. So Hesse mentions, a patient with rheumatoid arthritis asks the nurse about her condition. On which knowledge does the nurse base patient teaching? Rheumatoid arthritis is thought to be an autoimmune disorder. And Kaplan mentions, a client asks the nurse, what is the difference between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis? Which response by the nurse is best? Rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic disease, and osteoarthritis is not. Now, in terms of diagnostics, rheumatoid arthritis can be very difficult to diagnose since early signs and symptoms mimic those of many other diseases. So imaging like x-rays and MRIs are typically used, but it's very hard to diagnose during early stages. So a synovial fluid aspiration is used, where we take fluid out of the joint for testing. And arthroscopies provide direct visualization of the joint cavity and samples can be taken, as well as blood tests. So write this down. An RF, or rheumatoid factor, which is an antibody inside the blood, can indicate RA. And we have two other tests, which mainly indicate inflammatory processes in the body like an ESR, which is erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and a CRP, C-reactive protein. But again, these just measure general inflammation inside the body. So Hesse mentions, a patient arrives at the clinic with left knee pain that began one month ago. The x-ray examination and MRI were inconclusive. The nurse anticipates which procedure will occur next, an arthroscopy. And a second question here. Which tests perform to confirm rheumatoid arthritis, RA, and rule out other diseases? Select all that apply. Synovial fluid aspiration, the rheumatoid factor, RF, and the ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Now for signs and symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. The early signs include fatigue, anorexia, including weight loss, and morning joint stiffness. And then it progresses into more severe, symmetrical pain and swelling in the small joints of the hand, including the fingers. A key term is swan's neck or boutonniere deformity. We see contractures of the joints, which is a very high priority. Hey there, nursing student, listen up. Did you know only 20% of our videos are here on YouTube? You're missing out on over 900 videos not on YouTube, plus 500 visual study guides that follow along every video, and a massive quiz bank to test your knowledge. All neatly organized in our new app. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. Since this causes shortening and deformity of the fingers. Now a big one here is joint pain. Clients will get relief with activity and have more pain at rest. So write that down. This is very different than osteoarthritis, where we see more pain with more activity. So again, write it down for RA, we have pain relief with activity and more pain at rest, which results in deconditioning of the joints due to decreased muscle strength. Now Saunders mentions, suspected rheumatoid arthritis. The nurse would expect to note which early signs and symptoms. Select all that apply. Fatigue and morning stiffness. And a second question here, assessment on a client with RA. The nurse checks for which assessment finding that is associated with RA. Systemic symptoms such as fatigue, anorexia, and weight loss. Big key terms right there. Now in terms of education, it revolves around management of fatigue, joint pain, as well as stiffness. So for pain control, we assess the pain levels. And we do not elevate the knees with pillows at night. Write that one down. This will cause more stiffness and decrease blood flow. Now, exercise, we use low impact to improve joint function, muscle strength, and range of motion. So we recommend swimming, as well as a stationary bike, or even light walking. Now, this next one is a big NCLEX tip. 
we apply heat and cold to the affected joints, but just make sure to alternate them. So key terms, a warm shower or bath before bed. Write that one down. So Kaplan mentions, a nurse is assessing a client who's diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Which of the following non-pharmacological interventions could the nurse suggest to help reduce pain? Alternate applying heat and cold to the affected joints. And which nursing intervention is most appropriate for a client diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and reporting generalized pain? Assist the client with heat application and range of motion exercises. So write those down. Now for pharmacology, we can use NSAIDs and zone ending steroids like prednisone. Both are used to decrease the swelling. But really the most tested here is methotrexate, given to help the body stop attacking itself. So let's play that segment from our pharmacology master course. Now our next immunosuppressant is methotrexate. Now this one is the drug to know for the NCLEX, as well as your exit exams, mainly given for rheumatoid arthritis, as mentioned by Kaplan. This is where the body is attacking its own joints. And psoriasis, where the body is attacking its own skin, and even certain types of cancer to slow the growth of that cancer. Now, the mechanism of action is pretty simple. It stops folic acid metabolism, which stops cellular reproduction in the fastest replicating cells. Now, the bad news, like all immunosuppressants, the fastest replicating cells in the body are in the blood and immune system, as well as pregnant clients with a growing fetus. So we end up with a very weak immune system, leading to infections, low platelet count, leading to serious bleeding, and even fetal death with our pregnant clients. So the memory trick for methotrexate, we just call it methnotrexate. No pregnant clients, no crowds or live vaccines to avoid infection, and no razors or brushing teeth hard. Huge bleed risk with those low platelets. These are the big no-nos for methnotrexate. So the big key points for your exam come in terms of infection and bleeding risk. So infection risk, the big three are we report fever over the key number 100.3 Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. And secondly, we avoid crowds and sick people. And then lastly, we avoid fresh fruits as well as flowers. Now for thrombocytopenia, that's technically platelets under 100,000. So just remember, under 50 is very risky, and under 150 is very iffy. So we monitor those platelets under 100,000. Some big key numbers there. So report bleeding in these various ways. So petechiae, that bleeding under the skin, purpa, or purple spots under the skin, as well as melana, that black tarry stool, could indicate a GI bleed, and even hematemesis, that vomiting of blood, and bleeding gums. So we must report these findings to the HCP immediately. Now the HESI question that was asked for methotrexate, it suppresses B and T lymphocytes, basically meaning it suppresses white blood cells in the immune system. Now the big teaching point here is we get flu and pneumonia vaccines that are, keyword, inactivated. So flu vaccines are not contraindicated. But what is contraindicated is live vaccines like herpes zoster. So no live vaccines. So don't be tricked, guys. Now lastly, no pregnancy because methnotrexate is not baby safe. We must teach the patient to use birth control. So one question bank said no pregnancy until one menstrual cycle after treatment is resolved. Another quiz bank said, no pregnancy until three months after treatment is finished. And a third said, men, no trying for a baby until three months after treatment with methotrexate is complete. Now, don't let the NCLEX trick you here. There's no need for frequent eye checkups since it's not eye toxic. So remember the differences with the memory trick. Methotrexate, we say methnotrexate, since no babies. And hydroxychloroquine is eye damage for that immunosuppressant. 
Now that's how you know the differences. Now switching gears to... Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys. See you next time.